You know, it kind of reminds me of Luke Skywalker when he enters like that cave of fear. Is Francis Macomber Luke in this scenario? Yeah, because remember, like Luke goes into the cave to face his fears, right? And here in this story, you have Francis facing the lion, a.k.a. my view, the fears with pressure from society and with expectations of duty from the wife. Let's talk about it today with the short, happy life of Francis McComber by Ernest Hemingway. See, I thought the wife was the one that was fearful. She's the one that's mm. full of fear. Well, it's kind of like, are you hunting your fears, right? Like, and how do you, how do you become, we've talked about this before with Ernest Hemingway. There's, there's the person you think you are. And then there's the person that you are like that you do and that you can actually see and manifest. And those aren't always aligned. Right. And that cave of fear, the idea of, of going into the, the tall grass to face your fear, to face this lion is all about overcoming yourself, overcoming your own shortcomings sometimes. Whether you take it you know, metaphorically or not, that's another thing. But um, well, let's start with the beginning and talk about who, who is Francis McComber, right? Like we have the story named after him, right? In terms of his nice clothes and how he looks clean, but he's kind of pale. Like where would you put him on the economic strata? Like where would you put him on his own social awareness perspective? Like describe to me this character. Uh, he's a pretty boy. He's a city folk boy. He 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 is oh what's his name from Trading Places? Remember when she grabs his hand? Lewis. 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 She's like, never done a hard day's work. He is Lewis from Trading Spaces. Yeah, that that's who he is. You know, he he he's a guy that has had it pretty easy all of his life. He's he's never had to, I think, stress over much. Do you uh, I think that's true, but I also think he has shortcomings that he's aware of because you have like this Robert Wilson who is the rugged and red faced, uh, basically tour guide that knows the local customs, right? He is man unleashed. I think is kind <laughs> of how he's written, right? And then you have the wife, right? And, and and we open up with Francis being carried in on the shoulders, almost like a hero, right? He conquered the lion. Let's bring in the guy that was able to come out there and, and tame nature and all of its totality, right? So <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you have suddenly these like little subtle nods where like the wife's trying not to pay attention to Wilson, but she looks back at him twice. And Wilson's clothes, they're more rugged. They're worn in. He actually lives his life according to to nature or, or ways of of being more in tuned and francis is i'm gonna say maybe a little bit insecure he's not sure of his past like does he belong here right he's almost having that imposter syndrome of like i'm not a hunter i paid for these guns i paid for these clothes but i'm putting on the mask i'm not really that hunter guy I'm playing a role and literally his alter ego Wilson is the one that is the actual person who's done those sorts of things. And he's the one that is almost like putting on the show for everyone and like, you know, killing the lion for him and taking him to the places to hunt. Like he's like the one that is who he wishes he could be. I think there's a couple of good quotes that describe Francis. He's the uh, good at court games. So those are going to be, you know, fancier games, not to say that aren't, you know, quote, real sports or they're not tough or anything, but he's playing luxury games uh, or the, you know, he, he goes fishing, you know, and he has a couple of big game records for his fishing. And that kind of sets him a, a, apart from a more rugged lifestyle, a, a sport that is a little bit tougher, maybe more dangerous would be a good way to describe it. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that puts him already in his own mental capacity of I'm a coward compared to somebody like Wilson, who is out here roughing it. You know, he, he's the John Wayne of the story. Well, he's, he could almost be viewed in my eyes as who he wishes he was, right? Because I think the only weapon he's ever brandished was the pen to sign a check, right? And when he oh, gets yeah. put into this area where he's actually confronted with real danger, like 
all the stuff that he's money has shielded him from the city has shielded him from. And he sees how his wife who is representative of how a person should behave that you get kind of like a normative ethics discussion in here. Right. And there's like that weird, strange, quick line about the, when they were talking about the, the locals, right? So if we have three parties, we have the tourists, we have the tour guide, and then we have the locals as kind of like the three representations of humanity in this. And the, the locals were kind of like scared and almost like respective of, of uh, nature in a sense. But then when it comes to whether they get punished physically or have their pay docked, or there's like a quick normative ethics of what would you, what, what's the right thing to do? Would you rather lose money or would you rather take physical punishment? And you'll notice it's, it's kind of like a weird thing to kind of just throw in there for me, at least when I was reading it, it brought me out a little bit, but it made me think about how, you know, our main character, Francis, all he knows is the war of the pen. And for him to be like, oh yeah, I get that. I definitely wouldn't want to lose money. You, you start to realize his only way of combat is through financial jousting, essentially, when he comes into this world where money kind of equates to nothing other than it buys you that middle layer of humanity of the tour guide to teach you the ways that you have been disconnected with. Teaching the ways, I think, is a, a good way of looking at the story as well as Macomber is the coming of age story here. He is someone that has been gifted everything and he has to see how the real world works. And that's what he is kind of seeing unfold before him. He he knows his wife maybe has a little bit better grasp of it uh, that, you know, Wilson definitely has a better grasp of it. And maybe he's trying to relate to these people because they're making the same choice he would make. And so he's like, identifying with them, but wants to identify more with Wilson, uh, you know, because he sees that that's maybe what his wife is enticed by, uh, or he knows that that's what his wife sees as a true man. And we see as he progresses through the story that it is his coming of age story, that he comes from being, you know, maybe not innocent, not a boy, but definitely, you know, a man child, so to speak, and that he's becoming a, a quote, true man of, of this time period. Do you think it's only Francis's story, right? Like when the tour guide Wilson says the quote, you know, in Africa, no woman ever misses her lion and no white man ever bolts. Well, one, that's foreshadowing for the end of the story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she for sure. <laughs> she, she sure didn't miss her lion. <laughs> but, but obviously, if we're saying this line that no white man ever bolts, Obviously, he is the tour guide for the white man. Like, he's the one that's able to teach them the local ways, to teach him nature. It's apparently a common thing for the white man to bolt. We just don't talk about it, right? So this isn't, to me, just a Francis Macomber story. This is all the Francis's, all the men that are afraid to embrace uh, nature, per se, the, the, the whatever you want to call that form of life away from the shielding of society. It's all the men that are afraid to face that that run back to society where they can be coddled and have a lot more safety in numbers and safety in financial institutions. Um, that this is something that doesn't happen to just Francis. This happens to all men. And the fact that we have to decide what type of person we're going to be, that this is a constant story of the cave of fears. I also think that you could look at a little bit of historical aspect of the story of the African scramble that the United Kingdom uh, was going into Africa, carving it up, and then all the others followed suit where they're sectioning it off the different pieces of Africa for, you know, their own little mini kingdoms. And it's kind of the same thing here of like the the the, the white men coming in to Africa to, to hunt their sport, hunt what they want to take, and that he's showing them the way to do this. Like he, he he's allowing them to come in and take over and uh, hunt down what they want. And so I, I think there's a little bit of, you know, maybe historical element to what's happening, but there, there's definitely this piece of how do I capture my masculinity? And that is, you know, seen, I think, much through the 18th and 19th centuries, 20th century of, you know, hunting equals a manly man. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a lot of jealousy here as well. And again, it's not just Macomber's story. It's men in general that in order to impress women or impress people in society or see how people view you, you don't view yourself this way, 
is you have to portray toughness. And the way you do that is you go out and kill other things. That's going to, mm-hmm. it's that kind of old, you know, caveman mentality of, you know, I club food, I strong, you know, I provide for. And that's a very old way of thinking. So I think there's a lot of mixtures of layers in here in the story of, you know, how we're going to perceive or how I perceive the story of, of what what was someone's view on someone during this time period. And, you know, unfortunately, Macomber, I think he realizes it a little too late, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, OK, so let's let's start with with the flashback, right? Because he goes on this hunt. He, he's able to kill the small things. Right. He's led to the deer and that sort of thing. But it's it's the lion like that's the crux of what he's been the coward of, of what we don't speak of. The fact that no man runs from when they have a tour guide to show them through it. It's he was afraid of this lion. He, he wounds it and it goes into the grass and it's his agency to go. Right. And when he's when he starts to go into the grass, he, I think he he says something to the wife about staying and she's like, why? And rather than being like, because I told you to, or it's dangerous, I don't want you to get hurt, he says, because Wilson said to. So already, there's already some relinquishing of agency, where he's not going into the grass or telling his wife what to do because he knows the right answer, it's because it's what Wilson says. Mm. Right? Yeah. And I think that's kind of what starts to hand over, whether you take it just straight on a physical level, metaphorical level. Uh, a psychological level of what that means, you know, ultimately that night his wife sees failings in him, right? Or there's something that's just, you know, Francis isn't doing something for me. So she goes to visit Wilson and we assume that they hooked up, right? Whether this is the first time or not, um, I can't remember if there was words that gave us that, but, but let's just focus on this individual moment, right? He knows what she did. Be, and it's because he failed to kill the lion, aka to conquer in my in my you know psychological reading of the story to conquer his fears, that she went to a man that was able to navigate through that to go through those sorts of things, right? Um, what's your view on like that moment? And then did you have like a interpretation on that from like kind of like the historical level that you were talking about earlier? Not a historical one here so much, just the the psycho the, the psychological power struggle here. In re- any relationship, there's usually some type of equilibrium that equilibrium that's reached where whether it's a friendship or you know an intimate relationship, a healthy one is gonna have open communication and both sides see each each other as equals, uh, or at least they will treat each other as equals. And right from the get go, this is not a healthy relationship because he can't be honest with his wife that he doesn't know the answer. And it should be okay to say, I don't know the answer, but I don't want you to get hurt because I love you. He has to throw it off of, of, well, uh, the tough, the tough guy, a crocodile Dundee said, don't do this. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and, and then he thinks that's going to be convincing, you know, um, using somebody else I think is Francis's way. Um, mm. never, never using himself. He uses other people and he thinks that's going to work on his wife and it backfires. And, you know, potentially we're led to believe that she possibly goes and hooks up with Wilson, uh, you know, so to the detriment of the relationship, because there's this power struggle and it's unequal at the beginning of the story. I really Mar- like Mar- that. Yeah. Margaret has more power in this relationship. You know, she's able to be crass um, almost rude to Wilson. You know, she makes fun of his looks. Um, she's kind of flirting with him in front of her husband. Obviously, she has more power in this relationship, which is an unhealthy relationship. And as the stu- story moves forward, he learns this. And then as we get to the more hunting and he starts hunting bigger uh, animals and, and eventually kills larger animals, we see the dynamic shift. And I think that brings us to the end of the story of, you know, what uh, Margaret, uh, Margot decides, to, you know, to do. So, okay. So first of all, they introduced this word showery there. Are you familiar with that word? Uh, no, I don't remember that word specifically. Well, I, I had to look it up. Uh, apparently it's an East, it's, an, it's from East Africa, but it's basically means a debate, argument, or problematic issue, right? So we're saying the showery is in the bushes, which is a local problem, right? Is that Macomber and his wife's local problem? 
Is mm. it a local problem just to Francis, right? To your point about the, the power struggle there, um, Francis has always used money. And when this happens, he's like, she's not going to leave me. Why? Because she loves me? Mm -mm. Because <laughs> we have this history. Mm -mm. The, 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 even the argument of maybe religion, if they had one, I don't think it was clear that they had one. No, the money. Exactly. Right. Because the idea is that the only thing that he craves and believes he uses to use others, right? How did he hire Wilson? Probably with money, right? How does he keep his wife there? Probably with money. That's his one way of hunting, right? And even in that moment, when he knows that he failed to switch to have a different mode of looking at life, he failed. And as a result, he thinks his failings were, were or his, his way of coming back, his savior is going to be money, that that's what's going to keep his wife there. But there's there's this local shari, this problem that he's failing to address in the tall grass, per se, right? And, and Wilson, you know, th there's a lot of point of views here. Um, it's a very complex story, I think, because did you notice that there's even like a point of view of the lion at one point? <laughs> I guess I missed that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a point of view there, but um, I, I'm trying to make sense of it because in the narrative, it said that uh, Francis McComber himself struggled to understand Wilson, to understand his wife. And then we, as a, you know, as an audio reader, get treated to basically every point of view, right? Where we get to see the lion who's often neglected. We get to see Wilson who feels, he knew what he was doing and he almost feels bothered by it, right? Like, oh, these women are bothering me when it takes two to tango, right? Like, like both of these men are trying to blame their problems externally and neither one's facing their own local problem per se oh no i gotta sleep with another wife oh poor me yeah i mean <laughs> will i i there, there's a lot of stereotyping here as well that you know the rough and tumble jerk the you know the it, even in the story wilson calls out some not so flattering things uh you know about um mrs mccomber and, and you know kind of makes fun of her a little bit and it's like oh she likes that she plays into liking the bad boy another stereotype you know and you have the the weak husband who you know only knows money another stereotype so but i, I think that hemingway does a great job of playing into that and these characters that might not be interesting become very interesting because of their relationship dynamics and that helps mm -hmm. move the for the, the story forward ahead in, in a nice pace that i enjoyed Mm -hmm. Well, the, and the way that there's almost like those subtle flips on every character, right? Where once they go hunting and he's like, don't get out of the car. Like, don't shoot from the car. You got to get out. And it's only later you learn some of the legalities. And that's when you start to realize how they start to get one over on each other. Like, oh, finally, I have something on the hunter. He did this illegal activity and such like that, right? Like, that's when the hunter who just wanted to feed the ego of people who want to pay to do this hunt, they never bolt, right? He makes sure that that story never is published. He makes sure the story that's published is that they were brave and courageous and are carried back to camp like Francis was in the beginning. Only now are we carving away underneath to find out that these men, you know, who have these, these busts on the wall of, of these hunts, these, what do we have on this journey, right? We have deer, we have lion, we have these bison buffalo things that we're hunting too how many of these busts are are lies right like it's literally a mask on a lie of like oh let me tell you the story of how i hunted that but they don't hear the real story about how they're afraid to go into that tall grass and isn't that true right sometimes we're embarrassed of our shortcomings so we dress it up we make those lies and put on the masks so that these these things are literally figurative physical representations of our lies in some regard and i think that takes us kind of the end of the story right of all of those lies come back as and 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 francis you know would regret it if he could right because as the end of the story comes to fruition and the foreshadowing you mentioned earlier uh mrs macomber shoots and kills francis now we right, don't well, so know so, so they're going into the not. bush. Well, they're yeah. going into the bush. They all plan to shoot the lion, right? And when the lion comes out, instead of shooting the lion, she shoots Francis. And is it on accident or is it on purpose? And of course, that's the, the great debate. And that, you know, is a good topic of discussion. I 
I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of evidence to lean either way. I, I don't know if there's enough evidence to lean more one way or the other to say it was an accident or whether she did it on purpose. I think you can make an argument for both. Um, if I had to pick, I would say she did it on purpose because she finally realized that her husband was on equal footing to her. She had been in charge. She had been the one with the power and she's about ready to lose that power and lose that money. And because he might start making choices without consulting her or, you know, uh, using excuses, but that's just my simple interpretation. Well, what, what about the other two characters, right? So if we look at it, you know, the Wilson gave him three options for how to kill the lion. You, you face it head on the most dangerous approach to shoot it. Like almost like giving yourself very little margin for error. Only the most manly brave people would do this. And Francis himself said, I don't think I'm ever going to be afraid of anything again. Right. And he said, another way is to kind of like, like go off to the side and shoot it basically. And then of course there's the life from the truck, the safest option. Right. And interestingly enough, you have a character in each of those situations, you have Francis, who do we think he actually was conquering his fear finally to, to try to be the person that he wanted to be, right? And not, not even like embracing nature, but, you know, the person you think and then the actions you take of who you are are finally kind of coming together for what, what Francis wanted to be and, what, and how he actually behaved. And he took that most dangerous straight on position, right? which you'd think Wilson would take, but he was off to the side, right? He was in the more strategic place, trying to play it off, kind of like try to avoid. And then there's the wife who is farthest away, who's probably in the safest position, right? But also the most dangerous position to hurt things mm -hmm. uh, that you love, essentially, <laughs> right? So, so you have these three different ways of life, of approaching these problems and these fears, right? So whether the wife stays back where it's safe but can hurt the things that she loves, whether you face your fear straight on and die straight on and you yourself perish, or whether you're the guy off to the side letting others be manipulating and playing them, you kind of see those three different views of, of society in this moment. Would it be interesting if we got the lion's perspective here? <laughs> yum. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, we'll say this. We can agree that a coming of age isn't necessarily just an age of turning 21. There are potentially things to learn and experience in this world that do help you realize mm, things aren't always what I expect. If you enjoyed today's story and aren't sure what to add, you'd feel free to leave a little lion emoji. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoyed the talk. And of course, more tangible ways exist with Patreon and Ko-Fi uh, links down below as well. Thank you for joining us on today's discussion. My name is Benuna. Peace. Peace.